325,000. 325. Well, I'm being 100% mm -hmm. honest. That's about $50,000 above the Zillow's estimate. I mean, usually we don't even go by his estimate because, I mean, they usually overvalue properties. So, I mean, even mm -hmm. the 275 from Zillow, I mean, it's, it's kind of high. that call back. Oh, hi, yes. How are you? Doing pretty good. How about you? Good. It's good to hear, man. Um, is now a good time? Um, sure. Perfect. perfect, perfect. So, yeah, uh, Mark had let me know that you were interested in selling. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Not really, but I have no choice right now. Oh, why do you say that? Um, well, I'm going to be changing locations, and so, I mean, I love my little house, but it's going to be too far from where I'm going to be working, so. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, it could be for the better, you know. Sometimes changes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, uh, I guess before anything, uh, I do appreciate you taking my call, and if it's okay with you, can I share with you how we work before we get started? Sure. Okay. So, uh, I'm just going to confirm a few things you and Mark kind of got over. And uh, and if at any moment you feel like we're not a good fit for each other, just please let me know and I'll do the same. That seem fair? Yeah. Very good. So, if you are a good fit, then I'll go ahead and schedule a call. But one of our home buying specialists will present you with the number that your property qualified for. So, uh, I just want to start off with the condition. Uh, it is a three bedroom, two bath, 1,453 square feet, correct? That's correct. Okay, very good. Um, I mean, general condition seems pretty good. He put here brand new windows, new patio doors, uh, th but there is a crack in the fireplace. Is that right? Yeah, in the fireplace insert, there's a crack in it, so that would have to be replaced. You can't repair stuff like that. Okay. If you do, then you better be ready to repair to repair it. Yeah, and the day in the very near future, the fire hazard. Oh, okay, so the whole fireplace needs uh, needs to be replaced. Well, I mean, it's just an insert. It's, they, oh. would, they would have to remove the wood, put a new insert in, blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, um, so, yeah, is there an HOA in the area? No. No, no HOA, perfect. HOA, all right. Um, uh, I guess let's just dive a little deeper into it. Um, is there any repairs or updating the property might need currently or in the near future? Uh, it needs paint. Um, some of the bathroom, well, some of the bathroom tile needs to, need to be replaced in the second bathroom, not the master, but it's the one that serves the other two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, starting, I'm not a title person. Okay. But as far as, you know, as far as repairs and update, that would probably be it? Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay. A pretty good condition home, pretty average, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, the roofing is pretty, it's, it's not old. There's no roof leaks. The HVAC system works like a champ. I mean, if, if. If you walked into that house in the summer, you would be you could hang meat in there when it's like seventy degrees. Oh, okay. It's just very efficient. It's a train, so. Okay, okay. So it'll just be a little bit of work, you know, just a little bit, uh, just to get it up to standard. Um, as far as the timeline with it, um, what's that? What's that kind of looking like for you right now? Timeline as when to vacate or to sell. Yes, ma'am. Uh, like, as, as far as vacating. Uh, probably before March first. Okay, we could definitely work with that. March first. We could probably set the. Oh um, no, no, no! May first. May first. May first. May first. Oh, Sorry. Okay, okay. Yeah, March is way too soon. May first is March. Yeah, it's coming up, right? It's like in fifteen days, March. Yeah, I know. I was like, <laughs> what did I just say? <laughs> yeah, don't want to leave you homeless. <laughs> <laughs> right. We could definitely, you know, work something out before May first. Um, 
Okay. Uh, I mean, also, would there be anybody you need to consult with before selling the property? I, I just would hate to step on anybody's toes. Such as realtor, uh, um, spouse. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly, uh, around bank. that. Exactly. Uh, I would probably have to confer with the bank first. Confer with the bank. And do you have like a special type of loan with them, or, or how does that work? No. No, it's just a regular loan, but I, you know, since um, I had to put the house, I had to do some, what do you call it, forbearance on a loan. So I think all that has to be, I have to be paid up on that, and I'm probably a couple of months due on that. But I figure whatever I sell the house for, it can just go straight into that. Yeah, actually. So that can be um, taken care of pretty easily. Yeah, actually, regarding that. That actually gets uh, gets uh, uh, gets dealt with at the closing. So at closing, you know, you'll, you'll kind of just get the difference for whatever the bank, you know, is, is kind of what's owed to the bank, and you just get the difference of that. Okay. Okay. And you all pay the closing costs. Exactly, man. Okay. Um, so let's just say we went ahead and agreed to a price today, correct? I mean. What would realistically happen next? Would we be able to move forward with an agreement? Uh, perhaps, but I, I, I would need to speak. Um, I probably need to speak with uh, the bank. I just want to talk to the bank first. I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, no, not a problem. Um, if you want, you know, just make sure with them. That's no problem. Um, let's see. I mean, if you'd like, uh, could I just follow up with you maybe later today if you want to go and speak with the bank? Is, actually, the bank, is, is it still open? What's, what time is it? I don't know. What, oh, it's almost 4 o'clock. Yeah. Um, probably, probably Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday actually would be better. I have, I, my Monday is pretty full right now, so Tuesday would be a better day. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that works for me. Um, I'll give you a call Tuesday around, let's say, 1 p.m. Will that work for you? Okay. I'll put it on the calendar. Okay, perfect. I'll put, go ahead and put it on mine as well. Uh, I'll give you a call at 1 p.m. Uh, hopefully, that'll give you enough time to speak with the bank about that, and, and uh, hopefully, we can move forward. Okay. okay. Sounds great. All right. Well, thank you. Mark, have a great weekend. You too, man. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Mm, I can show you the, the Facebook groups that I found that have all the trained VAs already. Um, but most of the time you find two, three good VAs, your job's done because all they do is you just ask them for their friends and they flock in, right? Um, that's how I found all my agents is they're through referrals. At some point I had a whole family. I had the, the mother, the daughter, the son, um, and like a grandkid because she's like, she's like 68 years old, but she kills it for me. She's my top agent. So... Um, it's yeah, it's it, it's it's a whole it's a it's a game in itself, and it's something you have to learn. But that's something I would explore. Um, and if you guys really and I'm just shooting this out there, but if you really wanted to maximize your time, also the guy who does dispo, um, I would say either you can hop on the because bro, you you know the the most leads you're gonna get if you're if you're just all about the money right now and you don't really care how many hours you're working. At least the dispo guy should be hopping on half the day for the dialer. There's no other better leads you're gonna get unless than unless you're on the dialer yourself, right? Um, right? There's no reason to spend even my dispo guy, which I, I'm just about to hire. He's not gonna. There's no nothing to do dispo for eight hours a day. If anything, if you want to, if you don't want to hop on the dialer, what you should be doing is converting those realtors into people that are giving you leads. There's no reason to see them as buyers, right? Um, they're also a source for your lead. So instead of approaching realtors as that conversation with, um, hey, do you have any buyers, right? Hey, do you have any records, leads? And especially, I'm going to be pushing you guys to work a lot with hedge funds, right? These hedge funds make an offer in 24 hours. You don't need a crazy due diligence period with these with their, with their these realtors. And all you, have, you ask, ask them to do is, before they hit the market, come to you and you'll get an offer in 24, 48 hours, right? Sure. Um, that's just a way to source deals myself. But other than that, I mean, I'd say you should probably just be cold calling yourself. Um, 
it's kind of that lead by example, right? Um, if you if you want to if you want to get the best metrics for a cold call or what kind of numbers they should be pulling, do it yourself. Take down the numbers for a week and say, hey, this is what I did. Here's what you should be doing as well. Obviously, you want to expect like a 30% reduction in their productivity, but I mean, most more VA, uh, a lot of these Philippine people will be able to 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 cold call and get leads longer than you ever could, right? They they're built yeah. different. They they've been in this. BPO industry forever, so they don't mind sitting for eight hours and taking calls. Um, the work ethic is crazy, um, especially when it comes to the VAs. And I think the biggest thing for me was kind of my expectation on, because like you said, you you got Facebook groups that the VAs come basically already trained, so you just picking the best one that you feel is the best for you. And in my head, I'm thinking, man, I got to dedicate three hours a day for a month to train this person to make sure they're good enough to hop on a dialect, but the way you do it, it's, it's way easier. So, yeah. Um, sure. It's definitely kind of like a little cheat code because you would think you would need to pay them higher based on experience, right? But mm -hmm. realistically, I, I would say you should show them that when when I always interview, I show I tell them that there's lots of growth opportunities. I'm more than happy to promote you. You just gotta earn. You just gotta earn it. That's that's always how I put it, right? Um, the only thing is, and it's not even a big thing, is I'm sure that that company will probably give you like your numbers. Um, I'm more not, like I have it all, all set up in my system. I can show you guys how we what the numbers that we look at just to make sure because we've seen every trick in the book of how a VA manipulates the numbers. Um, right. and, and as a business owner, I want to know that you won't know that if that company is doing that, right? I guess you can go and see if you set it up yourself, but. Um, there, we're just always changing things in our company. You guys will, will see that. We're always changing things in our script. And I want to be able to create that culture where if I'm going to say something, you implement it right now and then, right? Yeah. Um, I don't want to have to deal with that. So if you guys have the budget, I, I'd at least get three VAs, VAs if you're not. If you don't, I would say two VAs at minimum plus one of you on the dialer. And you guys could switch too if you find enough time. Um, I guarantee if... if, if if you are, I think we had talked about it, right? You guys are in a Virginia market or? Yeah. 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 You guys 100% attack a different market if you guys are open to it. And even if you guys want, I'm more than happy to give you records in one of these markets that I'm in just to get your your feet wet. I'm not going to charge you anything for it, right? Because um, there's you're just missing an opportunity in my opinion. I'm t I told you at the beginning, I'm going to teach you what I know. And that's how, how, we, how we get average 20 30k deals just from a hedge fund right so um it's hard to do that in virginia in my opinion your your buyer pool is about 10 percent of some of these georgia um carolinas florida market um mm -hmm. i would push you guys to probably try orlando or tampa or uh, orlando or jacksonville um but it's kind of up to you i'm never going to push you in one direction um, and I have records in those markets. So if you guys want 20, 30,000 to just throw out a VA and see what the results are, I got you, right? Um, Cause you'll see a big difference. But I also think it has a lot to do with my script too. Um, I, I just, as I said, it's in that file document that I'm gonna give you guys. Um, it's pretty robust. I mean, we I'm big into human psychology. Um, mm -hmm. our, my VAs, I mean, we're not saying 99% of what other people say. We add on a lot of questions. Um, for example, we're not, I don't know if I told you guys probably when we were on that other call, but I don't, you know, like the averages we're calling out of the blue, just want to see if you want an offer. They're also saying, if that's a no, you're saying, I don't, um, do you have any other properties you want to sell? We take it a step further. Even we, I mean, we ask the question between that. Do you have, I totally understand. I mean, would it benefit you if I said that we potentially would be interested in selling, buying that property in the next six months? It opens up so many doors. Um, because a lot of people don't understand is that when we get that lead in our system, even though it might say six months, my guys are trained and you guys should implement this too. Every lead gets touched every 30 days. We do not care about follow up and like they tell us a date. We don't do that, right? Every lead gets touched every 30 days because situations change all the time. Um, plus, let's say we got that lead today in six months. Let's say you, your caller said no because six months, it's going to go back in the system hopefully and be recalled in I don't know how you guys set that up, but we do it every 30 days. The chances, we have 1.5 million records in our system. The chances of that caller being able to reach that person again at the right yeah. time to get that lead is very slim. Now, you exactly. let's say you do call it in five months, you get the lead. Now, 
you as acquisition guy, but you had that today, you're going to be following up with that lead thir every 30 days for six months. Who do you think they're going to do business with, right? It's a long-term yep. play. Um, so that's just kind of the things we implement. Um, are you doing it where you're following up like whenever they want or like they say two weeks, you're following up in two weeks kind of thing or how do you do it? So I usually do it whatever time they tell me to follow up, I split it in half. So if they say like reach out to me, you know, in six months, I hit them up in three months. Yeah. Or, and I feel like it gets, you got to a kind of a point to where when you're speaking with the person, you got to get a feel with it. Because recently I feel like I was following up with people. I'm like, man, this person ain't about to sell to me no time soon. Like you could just hear it. I'm like, let me push this back instead of once a month, which I was doing before. Let me push it back maybe you know, once every three months after yeah. I followed up with you once a month for the past year. Yeah. And nothing changed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So from the sounds of it, I, I'm not going to change your process. I'm sure you're good at sales. If you want to check out my sales script and how we get out every single fucking objection to start yeah. so you're not wasting your time, you're more than happy to do it and change it. But the, the first thing I would I would say for you guys to do um, in the next step, I would get three VAs at 350 an hour. I don't really care. Like if you want to listen to what I'm going to do, that's what I would do if I were you in your shoes. You, you just have a lead flow problem. That's it, right? <laughs> that's exactly. literally it. I, I, it's, I'm just going to be su stupid simple with it. Now, if you want, you what you could potentially do too is instead of hiring that third VA, one of you, you got your two full VAs, one of you potentially both of you are on the dollar just for two, three hours a day, you'll get one or two pretty good leads that are worth being in your system rather than a VA is just going to have leads in your system. There's a big difference, right? You're going to have one or two that are worth following up with. And it's even better because you're the initial point of contact. They're going to be right. doing business with you from the start. They don't have to deal with that VA in the start, in the beginning, but do that. And instead of the third caller spending $800 a month for that caller, just mm -hmm. double down on texting. Um, because you can realistically, uh, I think launch control, or I think it's launch control, you could text for nine ninety seven a month, which is a little bit more, but you're, you're, you're double hitting all these people, right? Right. Your, your goal with, I don't know how many records you have, but if you can squeeze that with two marketing channels with a little bit of budget, that's, uh -huh. all, that's what I would do if I were you. Um, yeah, that's what we use. We use launch, launch control. Oh, yeah, you said you, you're doing that. So... Um, mm -hmm. And how many records are you? Do you have all together? That's a good question that I don't have the answer to. Um, so how many people I do you text a day? Probably close to five hundred. Not 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 as much as it should be, but the plan that we have it only they changed their plan recently. Yeah. Like you, like you get twenty five hundred um, records or new. You know, it used to be follow up was it don't count towards yeah. But now they changed it probably mm -hmm. like two weeks ago because some new federal guideline and text messages. So now it's 600 text messages a day with the plan we have, um, which probably have to upgrade soon. But right now, 600 a day. So how much are you spending on launch control in a month? It's like 297. You're spending 297 a month on that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I see. Banking plan. Okay. If I were you. Mm -hmm. I would do, I would go up on the plan, right? I'm looking at it right now too, because it's something I'm actually just implementing next week, texting. So um, I'm still figuring it out as we're going, but I used to do it. I just wanted to focus on cold calling. I would, let me see here. In, in my opinion, if, if you guys have it, I, I would go to the pro plan. Um, my, I told you guys I hired a mentor. They What they do is they just have, they have four plans of the pro plan so they text 2500 times four times every single day right um, oh yeah that's that's what um gino and them do that right yes sir yes sir so and i didn't know that i thought that's six so that's what we're going to implement is we're going to start with two but i will go up to the pro if you but it's, i don't know what's your guys's monthly budget like what do you what do you guys want to spend a month so i guess is in, in my mind in my mind, I'm like, I know it's right now we, with the trajectory going on, probably not enough to do multiple deals a month with texting, but in my mind, I want to scale cold calling first. But I don't know what you recommend. You recommend trying to, I don't want to get overwhelmed trying to scale both of them at the same time. What do you recommend? I, I, if I were you, just take out a, take out texting and put that to another caller, right? Right. 
That's what I was thinking. Yeah, so, and, and I know it's not going to equivalent. I mean, there's, it's about half of what you'd spend on a VA, but put that money all in one bucket. We, I mean, look at me, right? I, I still only have seven or eight full-time agents, but we're doing six figures a month. It's a, if you perfect the process of cold calling and you sit there and train these guys the best of their abilities and always have those weekly training meetings, you don't need texting. It's just that, That's just an extra way to rent your list. You should never really be doing two things at once. Um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, take it out and possibly you you guys ha sit on the dialer for a couple hours a day. I would just do the, the, the good hours where, where you see a lot of success um, or where you see most of your leads are sitting. Um, but it's just not about spreading yourself. I mean, two guys is crazy what you guys can do with two people, right? The amount of hours you can... Just in my opinion, because I didn't have a ton of money when starting, bro, just be on the dialer all day. Like, there's no reason for you guys not to be until you get that 50K deal. At that point, hire five full-time VAs. You're, the only difference separating you from somebody else is just one big, fat-ass deal. That's that's literally it. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I agree. Because um, last year, we cleared six figures yeah but we we're trying to be at a place where like we're not having crazy overhead yeah to, to uh you know make a lot of money so like we don't want to have fifty thousand hypothetically fifty thousand a month in overhead but only yeah. making 80k a month yeah you know? like we, we don't want that so we're kind of playing it smart um but i think that kind of hindered us a little bit also no, nah, big part of that's for sure. Like for for a minute, I was like, I was thinking, I'm in my mind, I'm like, one cold caller can get us a deal a month or two deals a month. But I guess my expectation was a little too high, or I was not somewhere nearby. I messed up. I was thinking one cold caller can get us a deal or two a month. Cause cause you speak on you know moving to another market. I know my brother had a question about that. Yeah. Um, but. Because I know you're not trying to force us anyway, but yeah. I, I just want as much insight as I can about it. Um, we're in a very good market where our spreads are, you know, really well. Yeah. What, what is the biggest thing where you feel like why we should move to one of those more, I guess you could say, for lack of a better word, saturated markets? Yeah. Uh, like, you know, I think it's because the hedge fund buyers, right? It, it's literally a, a hedge fund thing. That That is the only reason. Now, if... Just because I don't have the experience, I don't know what kind of people buy in that, in Virginia. But if you 100% can take that next level and maybe you as a dispo guy is sitting there. I mean, how do you find most of your buyers? I do it through comping property. That's how we find all of ours, right? I'll go on PropStream. You take 20 leads in your system a day. I, how many people, leads do you have in Podio? Oh, man, probably, probably close to probably about a thousand yeah so you're chilling right so you take as a dispo guy spend two hours a day taking 20 of those go on prop stream and just look at llc's do what i did in my fucking youtube video all you do is find the llc's you reverse search them on open corporates then go to linkedin to find who yeah. the actual thing is that's all you should be looking for don't i would i would stop messing with realtors if i were you because i can get you I can get you to list, I, I have the ability to have you guys list on the MLS, right? You don't need a fucking realtor to bring you a right. buyer. Yeah, because most of, when I find my buyers, I'm going to prop streams, I'm doing the cash buyer filter, yeah. and I'm doing, you know, all, uh, you know, at most owned with for one year, has over five properties, just to say they're recent and they're active buyers. Yeah. Um, then I go and true people search all of those and text them and call them and have actual conversation with them. So I, I've gotten about a hundred uh, new cash buyers doing that within the last month, you know. And where uh, did, what, what numbers do they buy at? Oh, uh, so yeah, they all got different criteria. Yeah, so, but like on average, I would say, are they buying at 70, 80% or what are they buying? Like, well, really, because probably our biggest deals have came from the way, you, the way you said it, like we literally, if we got a deal, we look and see who buying over their cash, and we hitting them up. Those are the first people we hitting up. Yeah. Um, so those are usually where our biggest spreads come from, um, specifically from like duplexes that we move. Like say we get a duplex that's worth one sixty, getting um, sixteen hundred in rent, we can find a buyer who's going to pay full retail for it as long as 
you know, doesn't need too much work in his brain yeah. and stuff like that. Cool, cool. Okay. return to people one percent, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, Ms. Betty, giving you that follow-up call. Hi, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing all right. It's good to hear. So, um... I have, um, there's sorry. a technician coming to the house in a few minutes, so I'm not going to be able to sound the phone for too long. Um, so, we're discussing a cash offer on the house. Yes. So what other information do you need from me? Well, I, I kind of got all the info I wanted, but I, I know you had mentioned that you were ready to move forward because you, you wanted to speak with uh, the bank regarding your forbearance. Um, you, you said uh, to give you a call Tuesday because you, you'd probably think by then you'd, uh, you'd uh, have enough time to speak with them. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Okay, I did. And uh, I want to hear what you have to say. Okay, perfect. So I could definitely send you over to our uh, home buying specialist and he can give you an offer. Um, let me see. I mean, what time will you be free today? I can schedule an appointment. Uh, over the phone or in person? It'll be over the phone. Okay. Probably around 3 o'clock. Around 3 o'clock. Okay. Let me see. And what's a... Excuse me. And what's a good number I can send it in at? This one. No, I'm sorry. Like, what? What's a good number I can send in the property at? Oh, are you talking about? Oh, you're talking about cash offer. Yes, ma'am. So I'll, I'll send him a number. Uh, he'll run it by our finance department, okay. and we'll go back at you, and we'll let you know if we can, you know, possibly move forward with it, or you know, if we need, if, if we can come up with the best number. Okay. Well, let me throw out three hundred and twenty-five thousand. Three twenty-five. Well, I'm be 100 percent honest. That's about fifty thousand dollars above the Zillow's estimate. I mean, usually we don't even go by his estimate because I mean, they usually overvalue properties. So I mean, even mm -hmm. the two seventy five from Zillow, I mean, it's, it's kind of high. Okay, well that's the number I'm throwing out there. So you can call me back. So uh, I. I Realistically, I cannot send it in on that number. That's way too high. That's, that's okay. Well, we're done here. Thank you. That's Bye -bye. your bottom number, the three twenty. crazy she, she, she was asking 300 uh, 300 K a week ago so now she says 320 and I'm like I, I mean that we definitely cannot do two, 320 it's freaking it's worth 280 she's asking forty thousand dollars above asking about where to value that and then she didn't want any negotiate she didn't want to give a better number she just hung up calling her back I think it's a dead deal Sounds like she has really low motivation. I'm gonna make this because I was gonna make the front one the fake grass. Like nah, when you walk this one in. Makes more sense. This one because you walk in and then I can put um because I'm getting a custom sign like ovation equity like you put it in the center? Big thing there. Oh okay. But then this one I could put another whether it says ovation equity or like something like about 
deals or something, I'll do a neon sign over this. Oh, that's kind of cool. But I'd have to get a plug installed. But then I'll do that. And then I was looking to put like three of those like Monopoly type artworks like right here. And then I ordered from Ricky. You know, have you seen like Tech Buds? Yeah. He has like those uh, periodic table. One says like IMB, which is like investor. One says like hustle EQ. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I might yeah, put yeah. those going down here. Oh, that's hard. Um, and then I, I have like a, it's pretty cool. I ordered it. It's coming from like Croatia. It's like this big uh, sticker that says like ovation equity in the middle and then up, down, like sideways all around. It's like leadership, teamwork. Uh, sales. Oh, like, that's, that's so that's probably insane. gonna fill that area there. Is, um, uh, is Croatia by Ukraine? It's probably because that thing might be. Might like get delayed now. Nah, <laughs> like, like, like get bombed. Yeah, my, my sign. And then like trying to figure out what to do with this area, but I'm just about to order. I know I'm getting get like a acrylic sign where it's like it pops out of the wall and it's glass, and then it'll have our ovation equity like. Oh, that's crazy. And, and, and so I think it'll probably be about three or four feet wide and tall. Um, so, I can't turn on the light. But, because originally I was gonna do this for the, that vine wall. Yeah. But it's kind of big, it's kind of expensive to do all that, so. And then I might, Nat's gonna come and start working more, so I might have her be like the reception area. Oh yeah, that makes sense. to fill it. Um, and then I wanna get like, you know, like you see, the all in, or they see like those pull up banner signs. They're always like, oh, okay. max. I might try to put like one or two right there. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I just gotta fill the space a little bit. But I like it. I'm very slow at it. I mean, we've I been like in the office the for what, like <laughs> two months or something. And Come on, Eddie, you gotta build his ads, bro. So we always have, we have like <laughs> stuff these things. We should probably iron these, but I might put these in like your office or whatnot. We're doing, but these are from Ricky also, you know, for free. Yeah, you guys want to go eat? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let me get my wallet. Wasn't there like an issue with that one where like she didn't know the tenant was supposed to leave or something? Okay, she said fuck you, we said fuck you, and now we're here. So, um, I'm definitely not asking for the review on that one. There's another one floating, right? Yeah, next March, first week of March. And that one, I, I had to do a 70-30 split to find the buyer. But whatever I have on there is our split. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so. I don't even know what I don't even be looking anymore. Most of them are around that 20. I really don't like doing deals that are lower than 20. It's kind of annoying. Yeah. It'll come, it'll come. Not even that big. I think oh, it's yeah. like 27 right? or 25. Is that one that big? Yeah. Oh, I thought that was like. You oh, can turn no. it down That's Tremonti. I thought we were only making 14 on that. Uh oh. Well, last time I looked, I thought it said like 24. I don't remember. It wasn't that big. Like 15, 14. Yeah. 15 at that. Um, small last piece. Oh, cool.